Hey again guys and welcome back. In this video I want to show you how to make a custom circuit schematic symbol and component footprint in KiCad. If this video is too long for you, check the description down below. There will be timestamps to the different sections of the video so you can just jump around to whatever is relevant. I'd like to start off by saying that I am not a professional, I am just a hobbyist and the way I'm doing it will absolutely work. Is it the proper 100% professional way to do it? I don't even know. But what I know is I'll get you from this to a PCB, no problems. The first thing I like to do when creating a circuit symbol is to actually just draw out a representation of your part. And especially if it's a tiny little part, get something a little bit bigger. And then also um, you want to draw where the what the pads do. So on this one here, um, since I have a square here to reference this uh, inductor, um, that's what I'm going to use to reference all my other stuff. So this would be the in, and that's the in, and that's the out, and that's the out over here. And then they're actually, uh, positive is all on um, sort of this side, positive and out positive, in negative, out negative. So these are already labeled. The next thing you want to do is to grab a set of digital calipers. Uh, the digital calipers are important, or you can use manual ones, but digital ones are far more readily available these days. And you're going to want to measure the spacing between these holes. Now, if you want to take a shortcut, you can always use something like a breadboard, because a lot of these modules already have pin spacing to fit the breadboard. So if I line up this hole and this hole here, you'll see that it actually lines up perfectly with holes in the breadboard. So that's perfect. We know that the pin spacing is 2.54 millimeters or an increment of that measurement. So that's good. We can already know that these holes here, the center to center, will be some multiple of 2.54 millimeter or 0.1 inch if you deal in inches. Now the problem with this module though is that these two holes and by consequence these two holes do not line up so we're gonna have to take careful measurements between this hole and this hole but between this hole and this hole it's not so bad so I had already taken the measurements here it's uh, six increments of 2.54 so we have a uh, 15.24 millimeters and that's from here to here and I also like to write down the halfway point between the two because the halfway point um, we will use to make our footprint later on. That's uh, 7.62 millimeters. So that one was easy. So basically, I just saw that there was six holes in between the two. So I just knew that it was six increments of 2.54 millimeters between the centers. On the other side though, it's a little bit harder because you really have to get your the teeth of your calipers right in the middle of the holes and this is it's a little bit tricky but I think if you're patient you're, you'll be able to do it and just know that you are you don't have to be 100 percent precise when you get close enough uh, it'll actually work just fine there is a little bit of wiggle room when you assemble a part so this is 9.12 over here to the center here so 9.12 millimeters and the halfway mark is 4.56 and there we go now we need uh, an outline so the outline is to keep out uh, parts from you know fouling on this part so I'm just gonna measure it's about 11.3 millimeters on that side and over here, uh, this way, uh, like 17.3, oops, that should be 17.3, and this is 11.3. So as long as we're in the right ballpark for the outline, we're fine. In fact, I'd probably go a little bit higher and go 11, 11 and a half and 17 and a half just to give ourselves a little bit more breathing room. It's basically the outline to not put anything in the way. 
Also, I like this inductor here because it's a nice reference so the person that's assembling this PCB will know this is the, the corner it goes to. So I'm going to add that to the silk screen as well. So I'm just going to measure that out. So it's about 7 mils. And it should be a square. I'm going to check on the other way. Yeah, let's say about 7 mils. I probably won't use the exact measurement for this because it really doesn't matter. It's more of a reference. And then I'll also check the distance between here and the edge just so we can get a rough estimate of where to position it. That's about 2 millimeters here. So that's it. We pretty much have all the information we need. We have our pin labels. We have our outline. We have the hole spacing. And by the way, the most important thing here is to know your hole spacing. And now we can jump into KiCad and make a new schematic symbol. Now that we have our module's dimensions and what the pins do, we can jump right into KiCad. I have KiCad 5.1.2 here. And I have a tutorial project, but it, it doesn't matter. You can use any project you want because the software portions we'll be using are kind of independent from the project. So the first thing you need to know is that there are um, the actual devices, so like our symbols and our footprints, and there's libraries. The libraries are simply where those symbols and footprints will be stored. So first of all, we're going to click the symbol editor. This is the easiest part of building your custom part. And we're going to start a new library. So I'm just going to go File New Library. I'm going to give it a name. Uh, I'm going to give it a name, let's say, Tutorial. And then I'm going to make it global so I can use it in all my projects. If you have a component that's only going to be in one project, then you can just put it in the project folder right there. All right, so this is um, the software we'll be using. We need to start a new symbol, and we're going to pick our tutorial library right there. All right, we're going to give it a name. So DCDC DC, um, converter. small. That's what I'm going to call it. And I think the rest of this is okay to leave as is. Uh, you, if you need a reference designation, just go into the wiki linked in the description to go see what you should be using. U is good for us. And here you go. We have our names and we have the designator. Now I'm just going to move the name over by pressing M while hovering over. I'm just going to move it up and I'm going to move the U by doing the same thing. Then I'm going to scroll out so I can see a little bit better. All right, I'm going to draw a block to, do, to sort of demark the size of our package. And I need to do that like so. There we go. We can even move the text out of the way some more if we want. We can always move them back after. And now I have to add pins to it. So this here is the add pins. And I'm going to click. And then we're going to give the pin a name. So first I'll do in positive. And it is going to be a power input. And the graphic style line is fine. I'm going to go down. So it's actually going to go from top to bottom. And I can place this thing in here like so. I'm going to do another one here. And I'm just going to do every single one of them. So we have our in plus. So we'll go our in negative. And same thing, power input, down. And there we go in plus, in minus. We're going to make another one. Uh, this will be out positive. And it's going to be at the bottom of our symbol. So I'm going to go up like so. Oops, I made a mistake here. You see it has a, an underscore. We're going to fix that in a second. And my last one, out negative. And this is actually uh, output I was supposed to put, so that's okay. 
I'm going to put that here. Now if you make a mistake like I did, you can hover over and press E. So I'm actually going to hover over, press E, and give it pin numbers at the same time. So that's pin 1, press E, pin 2, and I'm naming these pins arbitrarily. Um, so that's out plus, and that's pin 3, and out minus, and that's pin 4. And there we go. And I think now we have a usable part. So power inputs, power outputs, everything looks fine. We're going to save the symbol. And let's see if we can use it now. So I'm just going to close out of here. I'm going to open uh, the schematic layout. I'm going to add a component over here. It's going to load my libraries. I'm going to go down to tutorial right here. Let's see what we have. And there we go. We can actually set that down and use it. And in fact, you can run wires to it. There we go. So this works just fine. Now, you probably won't want to short your module like that, but this is the way to do it. That was the easy part. Now, the next part will be to make a footprint for it, which is a little bit more difficult, but that's why we took careful measurements. Back in KiCad's main display here, uh, now we're going to do the footprint, so we're just going to click on the footprint editor here, and that's going to load whatever footprint libraries you have at the time. And here we go. So now we want a new footprint, and we're going to give, give it a name, so I'll say DC, DC, small, something like that. And here we go. So I'm just going to move these labels out of the way using the M key bring that up, bring the M key and bring that down. And I want to draw your attention to this grid. So right here in the middle and at the bottom here, take a look at these coordinates. Okay, so at 0, 0, if I go this way, we're at negative, negative. This way, we're at positive, negative. This way, we're at positive, positive. And this way, we're at negative, positive. So I want to put um, four pads down here and I know that my component has four so I'll go one two three four basically like that and I'm just gonna set them in their spots now what I like about uh, this is that the default pad is actually the correct size for a pin header and a pin header is just about the size that I need so I'm gonna grab pad number one and I'm gonna press um, E for edit and you're gonna see the specs so the whole size is uh, just under a millimeter which is fine pad number one also fine through hole circular you can actually change all of the dimensions here but I think this one is good for us and now it's for the X and Y positioning you can do this very precisely if you took good measurements alright so we know that it's in the um, negative negative quarter so I'm going to just do everything based on our half measurements that I specified earlier. So I know that my component is going to be sort of uh, narrow on, you know, on top and bottom, and then it'll extend vertically. That's my longer measurement. So for the Y, I want to go negative 7.62 because that is my long measurement. And for the X, I want to go negative 4.56. So actually, I was pretty close. Five, six, like so. And then we go OK. And that should give us an accurate spacing here. And I'm going to grab my second one. Well, actually, I think we can even give it a name. No, we could actually give it a net, but that's OK. We're, we're good with that. All right, I'm going to edit this one with the E key again pad 2. Now this is positive negative so we want the the X to be the small value again 4.56 and the Y to be negative 7.62 like so and then you'll see these two are perfectly lined up and their center point is still here. I'm going to grab our 3. I'm going to edit this one with the E key again 
And again, the x, that's our small value, 4.56. And the y, we want a positive 7.62. And OK. And then the same thing here, edit this one. And this one's positive, positive. So we want, again, for the x, it'll be our small value, 4.56. And for the y, it's going to be our um, big value, 7.62. And there we go. So now we should have, this should be all perfect spacing. We can actually check that with the measure tool right in the middle here to right in the middle there. And that should give us our 15.24, and it does. So that's perfect. Same thing, we're going to check the measure tool here, check between these two. And that gives us 9.53. Oops, I wasn't even in the middle there. Seems like I can't get the quite the middle. Oh yeah, it's because I have a grid set up. So you can actually change the grid spacing. Um, I believe it is like this. Yeah, grid spacing. And I'm going to uh, put the grid as tiny as possible. Oops, that's probably as big as possible. No, I think that's good. It's actually because we can't see it. So I'm going to see if I can get the very middle of that. It's going to be a little hard to get. And measure from here to here. And that should be as close as we can get. Yeah, 9.12. So that's actually accurate. I'm going to set my grid back before I forget. Like that. And there we go. The next important thing is to set up a outline where you have to keep stuff out of it. So we need to go, I'm going to put it on the silk screen, which is which is fine. And I'm going to draw a drawing. Now, these pads are what's important. The keep out area is just sort of how compact you want your thing to be. And I know that my component is only just very slightly bigger than the um, than the actual pad spacing. So I'm actually going to put my grid a little bit smaller, like so. And I'm just going to draw a shape sort of like this, sort of like as close as possible. Um, I don't want to take up too much space on my PCB, but at the same time, it doesn't really matter. There we go. So that's drawn out. Press Escape to get out of that. And now I know to not put my uh, component, basically, like any components underneath this thing. And that should work just fine for us. Now, the last thing I'd like to do is to set up um, a marker to designate where the inductor sits, just so you put this board the right way around. So I'm just going to draw an inductor here. And this is just uh, like a close representation. It doesn't have to be exact. It's just something that helps you or whoever is soldering this together to have an accurate positioning. So I think that's good like that, and I can move the reference designator uh, here, and I can move this here, and I think this footprint will be just fine. So I'm just going to uh, save this, file save or control S. Uh, you can set it into a library. I'm going to put it into, not sure, I can make a new library but maybe I'll put it in something like module. There we go. Save. Oh, it, it already exists. So I'm actually going to give it a different name. Like so, and into the module. And now anytime I want to use it, I can go Go get it into the module library and use it. There we go. So now I can pop into out of here and into my uh, schematic. So there's my schematic. Let me just resize the window for you. So in my schematic, I'm zoom in over here. I'm going to place a component. It's going to load my libraries. And I'm going to go down to Tutorial. I'm going to place this like so. Now I'm going to set a footprint for it. 
Um, there we go. Assign PCB footprints. Let's see, annotate. And now I'll go down here. This is my module. I'll go down to module, like so, and grab my DCDC conv small. I now have my footprint assigned. I should be able to just run PCB new, like so, and update PCB from schematic. Update PCB, close. And there is my device. And there we go. And this should be just about accurate. We should be able to measure it. And from pad to pad, see you can't really get to the middle of the pad. That's because it's not on a regular grid. But you can change the grid size. Change it to some, some multiple. zoom in a little bit see if I can grab the center ish of that hole and measure to the center ish of this hole yep it should be just about right and let's do the same thing but vertically yeah I think we are good to go so now all you have to do is design a PCB and send it out to your favorite PCB house and you're good to go. Thanks for watching. If you like these kinds of tutorials, let me know in the comments below because I'll probably be doing more of them. If you have any suggestions to streamline the process, also put that in the comments because I'm not an expert, like I said at the beginning, but I do like doing this kind of stuff. And so if you are an expert and want to share your information, let me know about it. But until then, thanks for watching.